Welcome back. Veteran actress Vatiswa Ndaha has made shocking allegations of performers being abused and unfairly treated by South African production houses. In an open letter tweeted to Arts and Culture Minister Natim Tertwa, Ndaha detailed unfair labor practices, poor remuneration and working conditions. It sparked a huge conversation on social media, with some saying the exploitation has been going on for years. She singled out production house Ferguson Films, producers of Ikaz, in which she played the character of Noma Rashia. Earlier, we spoke to Vatiswa and asked her to detail her major gripes against the industry. I think there's a hint that you know, but I think there needs to be more awareness. And, and when I say that, I, um, I'm referring to such things as when you hear that oh, the actor or this artist has died without anything, we have to collect money. And so that already indicates that there is something wrong. Why is it that every time an artist dies, they don't have money? So it's, it's always been there and it's, it's not getting any better. So what people need to know is that we don't live the glitz and glamorous life. It's really not that at all. Mm -hmm. um, we, we work very long hours. And most of the time, we, 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 we don't get paid, I think, what's due to us. I mean, in 2019, I'm still being offered rates of 2005. Yeah. So for us, um, it's almost as if um, inflation and the cost of living, those things are not considered. And you have to make do with the little that you got during that one production. We don't get salaries. But as, as much as you say, I mean, we, we've read previously a lot about uh, um, um, artists uh, not being paid accordingly. It's, it's not necessarily a new thing. Yeah. What makes you talk only now? And I'm angry at myself for that because... I think we allow it because we are scared of not getting the next loaf of bread. Um, we've always been raising things, but also we ask ourselves, who are we going to run to? Because sometimes when you go to your agent, the agent will like, oh, stop it, you know. Um, and are you going to go to channel? You sometimes get to go to channel because you think they're going to be on the side of the producer. So it, I think it was just time. It was weighing heavily on me. And I, with this turning down the offer of Igazi, it was me saying, I'm tired, you mm. know. I've accepted this for far too long. But did you engage the production company uh, before, before writing this letter to the minister? I've... I've I've made a couple of attempts to, to meet the production company for us to sit down and talk because I had other um, things I wanted to discuss with them. So even before they offered the, um, the contract, I had requested a meeting with them and even with Channel. And um, we got response from a lady called Lauren that she's handling everything. And I did not necessarily want to speak to Lauren. Um, I wanted to speak to, to the owners. To the owners, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, when one looks at uh, the letter that you uh, posted on, on, on Twitter yesterday, um, it talks about a certain amount of money, 110,000, um, what, for five weeks. And a lot of people were coming out to say, yeah. wow. Yeah. Um, that is, so this is a lot of money. Yeah. I want you to school us a bit and, mm. and, and break it down for us mm. as to what is entailed in, mm. in such contracts and why do you deem it a, mm. a, an insult, so to yeah. say? 110,000 rand before tax, that's not a salary. It's a once-off payment for that five weeks. Let's take someone who hasn't worked, maybe in two years, and this offer comes. You, the agent will take the commission, it will be taxed, and you're left with whatever, maybe less than 80,000 rand. You now have to patch up the two years that you haven't been working and try and catch up to this amount now and thinking beyond what's going to happen after the five weeks. So for me, it was a case of I really can't take this kind of money anymore because we're the ones who, who, who get flack when we, when, 
when papers write about our financial situations, mm. how we can't do this, we get laughed at. It's a whole lot to deal with emotionally, psychologically, and it, 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 it touches at your, your self-esteem. So getting this amount, what is it going to do for you? Would you rather then not work and know that you don't have money so that when your creditors come, you say, I'm not working, mm. rather than, but you've been working, how come you don't have money? And it's not because people are mismanaging. The money's just not enough. Right, so there you saw an earlier interview with my colleague, Palisa Vatiswandaka, speaking to her. Connie and Shona Ferguson, the owners of Ferguson Films, have threatened legal action against Vatiswandaka following her scathing open letter. And Daha has called the Ferguson slave masters and accused the production company of underpayment and other exploitative practices. The actress has asked Arts and Culture Minister Natim Tetra to address unfair working conditions in the industry. In her letter, she alleges unfair contractual agreements, makes claims about bullying and intimidation. Joining us now is on the line, Asanda Makaka, spokesperson for the Arts and Culture Ministry. And here with me in the studio is actor and co-chair of the Independent Producers Organization, Susanda Henna. A very good evening to you both, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Tepiso. Good evening. That's huge. Sorry. A very we'll good to evening to you, Tepiso. So let's start with you, Asanda. What is the minister's view of the letter? He's acknowledged on social media that he received it. What I can say to you at this stage, uh, Tepiso, is that uh, Minister Natim Kletwa has only publicly acknowledged receipt of uh, Ms. Ndaha's correspondence, but as of this afternoon, um, around 1,500 hours, has reached out um, and personally made contact with her. And they've spoken at length, including um, the minister thanking uh, Ms. Ndaha for her courage in speaking out and petitioning him, correctly so, directly and revealing in um, the detail that she has. Um, I also have it on good authority that uh, this is only but one of a series of frank engagements on the matters raised by Ms. Ndaha, um, but also to the acting fraternity as a whole in the immediate, in the immediate future. Now, what I also need to mention to you, Tsebiso, is that um, we are both aware that um, as recently as early this year, the National Council of Provinces did pass uh, both the Copyright Bill as well as the Performance Protection Amendment Bill. Um, and um, in the latter part of last year, National Assembly did that. Now, Nas uh, the Department of Arts and Culture, headed by Minister Mkhetwa, really put up a, a very valiant fight for um, the department stakeholders precisely because the concerns that are raised in that letter are concerns that have been raised by the stakeholders of the department in the past, perhaps not to this frightening and devastating detail. But um, as matters stand, both those bills are with uh, the President of the Republic first thing. Mm. And I want to talk about that, uh, the Protection of Performers Act, Amendment Act. Um, some of the social media comments have been from actors themselves accusing industry players or people of refusing to sign off on the deal. Are you also experiencing such resistance? Just repeat the question, Tabitha. Are you also experiencing such resistance to the performers, uh, uh, rather the, the PPAA? If I hear you correctly, um, Tepiso, you're asking if we have been receiving um, some of the commentary um, on social media uh, following the uh, publication of the open letter. And to that, I can say that, um, you know, it really has been such an important moment, um, I'm sure, not just for the acting fraternity, but um, for us as a department of the Department of Sport, Arts and Culture, because it is not every day for someone to be able to courageously articulate what um, Osis Vatiswanda had did. Okay. Um, it is something that people would consider career suicide. And after what she said, others also found courage to reveal what they had experienced. Now, this is something that we have taken and um, carefully compiled because it was for Minister Tekwa's interest to actually take full note of what was being said since yesterday, which okay. is why we are at this point right now. Uh
Asana, just uh, one more question before I turn to Susanda here. I need to ask a question. Is this the first time, albeit in a public manner, that the minister has been confronted with complaints about the film and television industry, especially in relation to exploitation? Now, in this particular manner, uh, I'm so is the first time. What this artist what has done, it is the first time. But as for being in touch with the stakeholders, engaging them on a regular basis, that does occur. We have to remember that even when we talk about uh, the bills in question, there would have had to be um, various consultations because the, process, um, were, the processes were initiated as far back as 2013. So engaging his stakeholders is something he does on a regular basis. In fact, there was a film summit um, towards the end of last year mm -hmm. where we had oh, producers, yeah. directors, um, all manner of staff that, that pertain to the creative industry sectors, including actors in one room. However, what now um, is being realized is that perhaps it is time to separate um, the, the, the content producer to the performer of the content and hear them out separately. All right. So, Asanda, you were in agreement with some of what uh, Asanda had to say there. Yeah. Um, so, as the independent producers organization, first and foremost, we celebrate what the actors bring to the stories we see on screen. So I'm an actor turned producer, and there's many as such, you know, who, who, who are like that. And as you know, without on-screen talent, we don't have the, the entertainment that the nation enjoys, right, on all of these stories. <clears throat> Having said that, though, the, the, the producer, a lot of the time, is that, you, you know, takes di dictation from the broadcaster, because they sign a contract with the broadcaster. Mm -hmm. And so the broadcaster will say, okay, let's make this story X for five cents, right? And this is how your budget is broken down. And in fact, to the T, you know, the way that you pay all your crew members, your writers and everyone is as per the agreement with your broadcaster. So in essence, I mean, we don't know the details of this particular uh, um, contract, but in industry but, well, let me let me talk about that because so, one of the things she uh, uh, talks about is poor channel oversight, saying that the producers uh, are, are not taking enough control in terms of the funding, how it's spent, etc. So that would mean also be benefiting uh, the actors themselves and the crew. Right. So, so this, but this is everybody. It's the writers. It's the producers themselves. It's the crew. It's the actors. You know, they will oftentimes people will take whatever they are given. Um, and, and that's what we're saying. I think today we're saying the, the industry has hit a place where it actually needs to evolve. And, and thankfully for social media, we're able to have this national conversation and the people in their millions that are consuming the stuff are saying, wait, wait, wait a minute. This can't be happening. Mm. So if we look back, like even to some of the most well-known faces, like Abo Ren Tlokwana used to play Velapi back in the days. We remember a story coming out when he passed away, how he had nothing to his name, right? So where, where, where in lies the problem, Susanda? I mean, uh, Vatisa speaks about a global contract that effectively leaves her, um, you know, pretty much like no work has right. been done. And, and we know that actors are regarded as independent contractors, so they don't enjoy the benefits of people who are permanent employees. Yeah. But is that standard for a global contract where, for instance, uh, you are given a global contract for a certain amount and you're told that you must, the, the producers have first call on you, uh, unlimited hours of shooting, etc., including uh, wardrobe calls, etc.? So th there is a yes and no. There is a standard. For example, we have a standard 12-hour day on a production. Some productions will go on a 10-hour day. But so, so that's, that's well known. And also, for, let me put it straight really quickly. So there's the South African Guild of Actors, when we, ha as the independent producers organization, have been engaging with them. So, and one of those things is to standardize a contract such that when we discuss terms of trade with all broadcasters in general, we as bodies are together as one. Um, SASFED is the umbrella body, which includes the writers, the editors, etc. Uh, and we're, we're trying to do that so that we can speak as one voice. That's what the Department of Arts and Culture had said when we had the film summit, that we need all of you together so that you, you speak as one voice. Mm. So wherein lies the problem? Lack of regulation. <laughs> so, for example, the Copyright Amendment Bill, 
inside it is the uh, performance prote protection bill as well. So, for example, like some of the, the greats that we speak about, their work would be repeated on air for decades. And with no royalties. With no royalties, right? Um, but if we take it models from other countries where people are assigned royalties, therefore, whenever your work gets out there over and over again, you're earning those royalties. Even the music industry has gotten that right. Um, so th this is where we actually need some support from, from, from the state to make sure that the, the, the playing field is leveled. Mm. Now, understand, this, the, you know, broadcasters are people that we work with, so you do business with them. So, and sometimes as a producer, you take the contract because you yourself need to pay your own bills, um, et cetera. Do you know what I mean? So even though, you, it, even though it's not a, an amount that you agree with or you think that it's right, if that's all the work sometimes that you have, that's, you know, that's what you're left with. All right. So we'll see if we can get uh, Asanda Makata back on the line again. So just in terms of unfair treatment by producers, uh, there is that perception out there that uh, mm. you have the so-called fat cats who eat and they treat uh, the actors really, really bad, but they do uh, the back-breaking work. And as you say, they're central to the success. And just looking at the entertainment industry, its contribution to GDP is quite significant it's quite sizable mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so why is it that the cake is not evenly shared and you're right there there's a perception there's and there's reality and there's individual cases okay so let's start with the perception so when you get a, a contract let's even call it the commission from a particular broadcaster you go and sign the contract this is the idea perhaps the producer had it themselves or there was a writer that came in there and they said, hey, this is my idea, please share it. You know, you write, you prepare the thing and then you present it. And then the broadcaster l loves it and okay. says, okay, sign it, does like now. At that point, there's a, there's a particular discussion about what, how much will be spent between the two. So that's one. So, so sometimes the actors, may, as an actor, you get an offer and you think, oh, they must be cheating me. They must be making way more than me. So now I'm discussing perception, right? Now I'm saying that, um, that's not all encompassing in, okay. in, in every Just case. Just hold the thought up because I need to bring Asanda back into the conversation. So um, I'm sure you heard uh, some of that conversation, Asanda, that Asanda was raising about uh, perception versus reality, but also he spoke about regulation. And mm -hmm. I'm just... Um, Curious, what is essentially different if you look at the South African Actors Guild, for instance, from the performance um, prote protection performance amendment act? What are the salient differences that will bring greater protection for actors? The reason when we have these conversations to be so we speak about both is um, because the copyright law system has experienced um, changes, especially since the last two decades. So why would that be? Um, the way we consume content has changed significantly in the past two decades. Whereas we would have had television being introduced in 1987, for example, we have had companies like Google being founded in uh, 20 years ago. Now we have the likes of YouTube. We have other places, spaces, platforms where we where we consume, you know, content. Now, I'm mentioning this because I'm trying to um, explain what I mean with the constant change when it comes to copyright law in general. Now, we as a country have been grappling to make sense with all these changes and to formulate effective responses. Now, I've already told you that precisely because we needed to accept that we need to meet these changes, the bills in, we're discussing have been passed by both houses. Um, and now where we're sitting is that since 2013, the amendment of the two bills took various stages, which included broad consultations. Um, I'll cite two. Um, in 2013, an interdepartmental committee was established to work on the initial draft of the bills. And um, finally, in 2019, the National Council of Provinces conducted public consultation and subsequently adopted the bills. Now, back to your question, why do we need them? Um, we need them because we need an introduction of guidelines when it comes to contractual engagement. We need an introduction of clear rules when it comes to commissioned work. We need to have 
a law that is very specific when it comes to the share in royalties regarding audiovisual works. We need a revision of the de- definition of our collecting societies. We need oversight on the administration of rights. We need firm rules on the collection of royalties. But also, we need penalties for failure to adhere to the legislative requirements um, or, or the prescripts. So, I'm just trying to get into the detail of what these laws entail. Um, yes, they are separate, but they talk to each other. And certainly when it comes to uh, the Performance Protection Amendment Bill, that one is the one that when I say that we are dealing with an environment that has changed so vastly, because whereas um, the previous law from 1967 um, would say that it is the producer of the content that gains. What the amendment seeks to do is to say that, no, we need to share, you know, um, you know, profit or royalties or whatever is collected from this. The sharing has to happen between the producer and the performer. So we've gone through the processes now with, with these bills being passed. But one last point that needs to made, be made in this discussion, Tepiso, is that, you know, I, I listen um, to some of the conversations and some of the presentations and submissions that have been made by various entities, including that of Osisa and that, that you have in studio. What is really needed here, and Minister Mtetwa actually said this, is that unity in purpose is absolutely required when it comes to actors. Of course, that's a principle that can be applied anywhere. And the reason he said that is because here we are talking about, um, you know, two bills that are currently sitting on the desk of the president who must have and, and has every right to exercise his prerogative before ascending these two bills. But what practitioners and participants of the creative industries don't realize is that there are other people who have interest in this matter who don't necessarily want to share the royalties with the performer. Asanda, if I might just interrupt you, if I might just interrupt you, I think Sander was just saying that he believes the bills need to be revised before they're actually signed off by the president. Is that right, Sander? Yes, so correct. Um, It's correct, but let me be clear. It's important that the actors get their royalties, right? But then when we speak about fair use, particularly inside the IPO, there's two schools of thought, that fair use, particularly when it goes out into the internet, might actually rob the writer and the producer. So, uh, and, and in consultation with our community of producers, the, the feeling is that actually we do need to recheck that some of these clauses. So again, so it's not taking away the right for the actor to get their royalties, but it's to make sure that the writer and the producer are also protected when the material then goes out so into the internet. So you feel they're disadvantaged by this new bill? Well, yeah, some of the clauses actually might endanger that. Mm. So, um, and, and in a way, it's good that it's still sitting with the president, but it, those, those particular clauses do need to be revised to make sure so, so that all the elements within the ecosystem are all protected. Asanda, what is your point of view? Is there, is there yeah, room for that? Minister Mtetwa is the first to admit that um, as government, it's absolutely necessary to listen to all the parties and it is the intention, his intention, not to affect the growth um, of the arts and sector. It's, uh, um, arts and culture industries negatively, but to address the abuses that many people have faced over the decades. Now, right. yes, it is, it, it, what Ustasana is saying is very valid, but as I said, it is the prerogative of the president. The possibility is that he could decide to sign the bills into law in full or partially with some clauses rejected, um, or it could be withdrawn and returned okay. to Asanda, national Asanda, I'm assembly. afraid we're going to have to leave that there with you. Thank you very much. Asanda Magaka, spokesperson for the Arts and Culture Ministry. So, Susanna, I still feel that having had this conversation, and I, I understand that you uh, are speaking as co-chair of, I, of the IPO, but at the same time, you yourself are, are an actor. Correct. And we're still none the wiser as to whether or not it is perceived exploitation or it is indeed exploitation. Certainly some of the big names that have spoken about this, uh, Florence Masebe, Silo Makigangube, yep, yep. uh, Tony Very Horoche. True. But have we considered that there's exploitation on the producer as well and, and the writer? Sometimes. So these are the reasons why that regulation needs to come. This is, it's very good. So to are, you, are you admitting that there is exploitation on all fronts? Is that what? Yes, but what I'm clarifying is that it's not always the producer that's perpetrating this thing. 
So sometimes I may just be a facilitator. So the system is Exactly. To blame. That's what the system does need to evolve. And all these parties need to come around, including agents of government, to help us to make sure, okay, this is the regulation that's going to move us forward. So then what is the solution for people like Fatiswa Ndaka and uh, Florence Maseba certainly saying that, you know, for those of us who speak out, we are bullied, we are yeah. blacklisted. And there's right. many other actors who've also responded in kind. Speaking out means that you are considered as troublesome, therefore you've frozen out, you don't get jobs. But Tepiso, pioneers bear the scars, don't they? And then at some point it changes. I feel like we are at that point now. Even broadcasters may admit that actually we need you. You are the faces that keep bringing people well, onto the so. screen, yes. And so when, when the conversation has reached this point, it, it just means we all got to come to the table and figure out a new way of coexisting. So it's a good thing. It creates an opportunity to go back to the drawing board is what you're saying. Exactly. And then make sure that the outcomes are enforced. Otherwise, exploitation mm. could continue. But what happens just very quickly to... People who've been in the industry for 50 years yes. who lament bad treatment. Mara Lowe, not so long ago, said that there are many industry giants who are still not reaping the benefits of uh, you know, being pioneers within the industry. Right. So, I mean, let's talk about sexual harassment. Just as one side note, in terms of bad treatment there. And we saw a movement that grew, um, even organizations such as SWIFT that came out of that, releasing a code of conduct that then goes out and, and as IPO we endorse that to say this code of conduct must be adhered to on all sets. Let's talk about safety. Sometimes once or twice an actor may have passed away on set. Was there a medic? Is there insurance? These, all these measures need to be enforced to make sure that if you have that contract you have to have these particular things in order to function. All right. Um, as a company or as a producer to produce the, the stuff that people love to watch. So Sanda, thank you very much for speaking to us. He's co-chairperson of the Independent Producers Organization, Sasanda Hena. Don't go away.